Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 12 part 1c ATP and mitochondria. I know last video was pretty intense so this video is not gonna be like that long okay not gonna be that long uh, but we are going to recap it a little bit um, in terms of how ATP is synthesized and then move on to how mitochondria is adapted in order to carry out aerobic respiration. So ATP can be synthesized in two ways, right? Substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation occurs in glycolysis and in the Krebs cycle, whereas oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the um well it, near the electron transport chain. So for substrate level phosphorylation, um two ATP are produced in the glycolysis, two ATP produced in Krebs cycle, and that's four ATP in total. This is per molecule of glucose. Um, and it's called substrate level phosphorylation because chemical potential energy released from reorganization of chemical bonds is used to directly combine inorganic phosphate to ADP. So the potential energy that is re chemical potential energy released directly causes this molecule to form right here. Oh, I realize you can't see it. Right there, you can see it forming just by the release of energy. However, in oxidative phosphorylation, see here, it occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane or cristae. Um, it doesn't use the chemical potential energy, but requires a proton or electrochemical gradient instead, instead um, as well as ATP synthase and electron transport chain. And this is not by the chemical potential energy, instead it is by electrical potential energy released by as chemiosmosis. So this electrical potential release is used by ATP synthase in particular to catalyze the formation of ATP as we seen in last video. And most of the ATP is produced through this process here, 28 ATP produced per glucose molecule in total. Now this here, oxidative phosphorylation, also happens during photosynthesis in the chloroplast. And this is found in chapter 13, next chapter. So whatever you know here, don't forget it. Let's look at the structure and function of mitochondria and how the structure uh, is adapted for its function. Now let's just have a little recap about mitochondria. Um, yes, we just learned that it is the site for link reaction, Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Um, but also recall your chapter one, it is rod shape. It's able to change shape and move in the cell and able to change in size as well. It's around 0.5 to 1.0 micrometers in diameter, slightly smaller than a chloroplast, um, but quite big. You can see it under a very powerful light microscope sometimes. It has a double membrane, so inner, outer, and also a matrix. Don't forget they have ribosomes, they have circular DNA, they even have some major, um, some granules going on and porins, but this is more information than you need. The number of mitochondria in a cell, number of cristae, and length of crista in a mitochondria really depends on the cell. Okay, so let's look at the structure and function. Let's look at the matrix first. So matrix, again, it has mitochondrial DNA, it is small, it is circular, it has 70S ribosomes which are different, smaller compared to ribosomes in the cytoplasm at the RER, right? These ribosomes can synthesize mitochondrial proteins. What are these mitochondrial proteins needed for? Well, there are many enzymes needed for the link reaction and Krebs cycle. Every stage is catalyzed by an enzyme. We don't learn the enzyme names, but I assure you the enzymes are there working very hard. So the matrix and the ribosomes in it, the DNA play a huge role. Of course, it is by transcription and translation as well that these proteins are produced, very similar to the one we have learned. Let's move on to the inner membrane or the crista. Now the inner membrane is the site of electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. And therefore, it actually holds many special proteins and electronic carriers. 
for example, enzyme synthase, ATP synthesis, channels for H plus ions, components of the electron transport chains, etc. This, um, this inner membrane doesn't have random arrangement, but there is a linear arrangement of electron transport chain on the inner membrane, which means it is arranged in a row. And this is for greater efficiency, really. It's faster if they are next, right next to each other in a row. Now, of course, we know that the inner membrane is folded, but why is it folded? Because this increases the total surface area for ATP synthase and membrane proteins. So, um, active cells would have more foldings and dense cristae in order to produce even more ATP. Now, the inner membrane, usually membranes, can be a little bit permeable to ions, not a lot, but you know, because ions, H plus ions in particular, are very small. But this inner membrane is very closely packed and impermeable to H plus ions. This helps maintain the protogradient so that the H plus ions only goes through channels, i.e. ATP synthase. Number three, the outer membrane. Now, the outer membrane is... Um, does not have ETC and does, does not have membrane proteins. It's different in composition entirely. It is smooth, it is not folded, and it's more permeable actually. So, inner membrane is impermeable to H plus ions, but the outer membrane is actually more permeable to small molecules than the inner membrane uh, because it needs to transport, it contains transport protein to transport pyruvate into my mitochondria for link reaction and following that Krebs cycle. Number four is the intermembrane space. So this is the space between the inner and outer membrane. Now you would think to yourself, what special features would it have? Well, it just allows accumulation of H plus ions. There will be many H plus ions in there. Um, you would expect it to have a lower pH due to the high concentration of H plus ions, therefore more acidic. And that's it. That is the structure and function of mitochondria. There is, again, there is the outer inner membrane, the intermembrane space, the matrix, and the highly folded cristae in order to increase surface area to volume ratio. And that's all for mitochondria. See you next video.